I'm very, I'm very optimistic, optimistic. You, know, you know, that's, that's, that's it. it. The, the aging, aging, the way, the way we, we know it is gone. gone. We are not, not going, going to have, have one disease, disease and its treatment and a second, second disease of a treatment and you have four diseases and their treatment and they're interacting with each other. That's not life. And it shouldn't be like that because we know we can do better. But this is the good news. Aging can be targeted. Aging can be delayed. Aging can be stopped. Aging in some instances can be reversed. Thank you for joining Change I Am Possible, which is India's first feature tech podcast. And I'm super excited to have Dr. Neer Barzilai. I'm going to give like a small introduction and we can get into the conversation. So Dr. Neer Barzilai is the director of the Institute for Aging Research at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and the director of the Paul F. Glenn Center for the Biology of Human Aging Research and of the National Institute of Health's Nathan Shock Center of Excellence in the Basic Biology of Aging. He is the Ingeborg and Ira Leon Renner Chair of Aging Research, Professor in the Department of Medicine and Genetics, and member of the Diabetes Research Center and of the Division of Endocrinology and Diabetes in, in Geriatrics. He is on the board of the American Federation for Aging Research, founder of Cobar Inc., and has been recipient of numerous prestigious awards. And he is currently leading an international effort to approve drugs that can target aging, which the project is called Targeting Aging with Metformin. It's a pleasure and honor to have you, Doctor. Super, super excited to have you and have the discussion on human longevity. So I personally have been super excited about the possibilities of human aging healthily, right? Uh, a, a world where the old don't have to suffer and die. So could you start with why do we age? Do we have to age? And can aging be controlled? Look, let's start with the good news, okay? Aging has a biology. We know it, right? We know who's old and who's young. We know it better than if you ask me who has diabetes, who has high cholesterol, we wouldn't know. We know aging. But this is the good news. Aging can be targeted. Aging can be delayed. Aging can be stopped. Aging in some instances can be reversed, okay? And we've made a huge pro progress in that. Uh, we scientists, I should say, we're called actually geroscientists. Geroscience is this um, science that looks if aging uh, can be relevant to stop age-related disease. That's who we are. We're geroscientists. And we have good news for you. Yes, it can be stopped. It can be delayed. I didn't tell you that you can be immortal or that, that we're stopping death, but aging the way it is can be delayed. So, so why is it that we age? What is the reason? Are there some biomarkers? Well, there are two different questions. Um, look, you know, when, when you have a, a question in biology, you always go to evolution and say, why, why, you know, what's in evolution made evolution select us to what we are, okay? And this is the problem with aging. Aging is not really something that's selected by evolution because evolution is about having your kids, okay? You're young, you're having your kids. If you had good genes, okay, then they'll succeed more than other people and that's what will drive evolution, okay? Now, you're today, we are not dying once we had our kids. We live 40, 60, you know, 80 years later, okay? And, and that wasn't a plan of evolution. That's a leftover, right? If, if you have your kids and you then age quickly, you're dead in the next year, it's too late. You had your kids. And if you had your kids and now you live 80 years more, well, there is no selection for that. You had your kids, okay? So this is the problem, right? That evolution didn't select aging. Uh, it's more than that. Some things that are good for reproduction are bad for aging. So, um, for example, you need cholesterol to, to build the cells, to build the ovaries, to build the brain, okay? Okay. So when you have a lot of cholesterol, it's good when you're young. What does cholesterol happen does when we're old? It kills us. It's called antagonistic pleiotrophy. Something good for you as, as young kills you as you're, you're, you're old. So evolution is about get, getting to reproduction. And after that, what starts happening? 
we start breaking down. It's very similar to what happens to everything, to your car, <laughs> okay? We're starting breaking down. And really aging is about your response to breaking down, okay? And the better response you have to breaking down, the longer you would live. Aging and death has been accepted as an eventuality, one which we don't dare question. You know, I mean, there has been quite a lot of headway in us understanding of biology. Craig went in 2013, I mean, did the entire genome sequence, and but I don't really know where it stands at this point in time and how does it help aging. So what got you interested in aging and how difficult has it been as, as, as a subject? Because, I mean, so far it's been a no-go. If I have my conversations with, you know, my like my, my in-laws and I tell them that, oh, no, we are at a point of time that we can actually control aging. But then suddenly they, pick, they take this picture of God and they said, oh, no, how can you even say that? That's an eventuality. That's a, that's natural. You know, we age, we get married, and eventually we die. How do you? Why would you want to challenge that? So, as a subject, it's been so, like you know, no go. So, what got you excited in aging? I know it's. You're right. It's very frustrating that everybody was told that there is nothing you can do about it, right? And so, it's immediately. Are you crazy? If you tell them, I'll treat your diabetes. They accept it. I'll treat, right. treat your cholesterol. They accept it. I'll treat your aging. It also has biology. No, no, no. What are you talking about? So for me, it was kind of interesting in, in the sense that I was, when I was 13, I was walking with my grandfather who told me the story of his life. Okay. Quite amazing story. What he did it as a young man. And I'm looking at him. He's 67 years old. He's obese. He looks old. He doesn't have much hair. The rest is white. He's walking slowly, okay? And I'm saying, just a minute. Uh, this is the same guy. I mean, the stories that he tells me, it's him. Some, something, you know, they say that kids have imagination. But you, you, you as a kid, you don't think, oh, that's my grandparents. That's how I'm going to look like. You think it's something else, you know? Uh, and and for me, it was a curiosity that stayed with me throughout my career. How is it? You know, what's happening that people are aging like that? This is a huge, huge phenomenon. Why nobody's doing anything about that? Right, right. Yeah, so, so it's a, such an exciting sp space to be in because if, if and if, I mean, you know, whenever we find a possibility of... Uh, uh, reversing aging or controlling aging, there is so much that we can do because I have seen people, family, friends, you know, the old uh, suffering and dying. And if this can be controlled in some way in, in the e eventual future, it'll be so exciting. So you have been, you have spent your life, you know, trying to find an answer. So what have been the findings from your longevity research and studying centenarians? And how is that understanding being leveraged in your research for longevity? Uh, terrific, terrific question. So, you know, first of all, the reason we, we went quite far is because we decided we don't have to look and describe aging. First of all, it's boring. Second, everything kind of goes wrong. What, what, is, you know, what does it tell you? We started looking at models that live longer. You know, why, why some animals, the same species, live longer? For, for example, if you do caloric restriction to animals, you give mice or rat, actually every animal in, in the planet, you give them to eat less food, they live significantly longer, okay, and healthier. Wh why is it? So we all found models like that. And I had some models like that, but then I said, you know, uh, let's look at 100 years old, okay? Because 100 years old lived, you know, when they were born, life expectancy was 40. And if they came to 40, it may be 60, but they basically, their friends died 50 years ago, okay? So how come, what happened to them? Did, did their aging slow, okay? So is this a model to look at, at aging that will be re relevant to humans? And that's when I started uh, looking for 
100 years old, and I have 750, 100 years old in my study, where what I'm looking for is longevity genes. So I'm looking for changes on their DNA that slows their aging. Okay, that's what I'm what, what I'm doing. I also have their children, their offspring, because their children also live longer and healthier. So another another population that they're aging slow, and I'm comparing them to you know regular population. Now one of the first questions for me was, okay, do they get sick um, when everybody gets sick? And now they're living 30 years more sick, <laughs> or is their lifespan and health span goes together? And the answer is, oh, it absolutely goes together. They are not only living longer, they are living healthier. In fact, they're living 30 years more healthier than, than other people today. And not only that, they have another something that even is more exciting than that. They are sick very little at the end of their lives. We are sick five, eight years at the end of our lives. We're starting to accumulate disease after disease. They are sick few months at the end of their life. They have what we call in, me in medical term, contraction of morbidity. They're sick in, in a very short space. So what am I telling you? There are people, okay, who are healthy, 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 100 years and then they die. You know, 30% of my centenarians after the age of 100 don't have any disease. Okay, they, they don't wake up in the morning one day. And, right. and most of them don't have disease for a long period of time. So that, that's why it was really interesting to study them and to discover what, why their rate of aging is slow. Right, right. So, so what has your research findings been on caloric restrictions? Because, you know, suddenly, you know, the entire Silicon Valley is, you know, harping on intermittent fasting. And it's something which I also tried, but, you know, it's something which I couldn't really because I love, love food. So I couldn't continue that. Now, uh, longevity genes, you said that uh, you have discovered several longevity genes. Now, how was that being leveraged in your research for longevity? So, so first of all, in, in the caloric restriction area, um, the, the first studies for me were to see if the amount of fat of adiposity um, is the reason that with caloric restriction, we live shorter or longer, okay? And I've done lots of studies where I um, remove fat and brought fat and stuff like that, and 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 it's certainly part of, of this. But there's something more interesting that I learned through the years, and not for a long time. I didn't think of it for a long time when I did the research, and that is that when you do uh, the studies in caloric restriction, what do the what do you do? You take the mice, the rats, you give them to eat, you figure out how much food they have for day, okay? Then you separate it for two groups. One, continue to eat whatever they want, and the others, we give them 60% of that, okay? And we come and feed them every morning, the 60% of food, okay? Now, they're very hungry. So what do they do? They finish the food like in 20 minutes. In an hour, the food is gone. So it's not only that we caloric restricted them, they also were fasting for 23 hours, okay? And we learned that if we feed them throughout, so, so uh, for, for us before that, caloric restriction meant have less for breakfast, less for lunch, less for dinner. But when we gave those animals less for lunch, less for, uh, less for breakfast, less for lunch, less for dinner, they were thinner, they didn't live longer. So you have to have not only the caloric restriction, but the fasting. And the fasting is the one that protects you against aging. So what is the reason 
that you looked at metformin you know what what why repurpose a drug because there are so many others who are kind of like trying to figure out various ways for uh, you know human longevity why did you go for metformin and and, and can, could you talk a little bit more about the team project what what's the the finding so far from there so uh, so why metformin metfor so le- let me tell you why i'm doing this study okay i'm doing this study because just like you know, your in-laws are skeptical, okay? Um, the FDA is skeptical too. I mean, if people didn't hear that, they're saying, are you crazy? You think that aging can be stopped and one drug can do it? I mean, get out of here, okay? And the problem is that aging has no indication, okay? The, uh, the FDA, the regulatory forces, I don't know what's the FDA in India, but whoever does the regulation of drug, does it for diabetes, does it for cancer, does it for uh, heart disease, right? Not for aging. So we came to the FDA and said, look, we have a drug that we want to repurpose. It's called metformin. Uh, we need a way forward. Tell us what do you want us to show you so that you agree with us that aging can be targeted, Okay. And so we took a drug, we're a bunch of scientists, we're, we don't have pharmaceuticals involved here, we're a bunch of scientists, we come to the FDA and we tell them, help us, um, you know, h- help us find indication. Why did we choose metformin? Because metformin, look, the history of metformin, that people, it's an extract from French lilac, it comes from a flower, it's a natural thing. Um, it, need, it needs, you know, it's not that you can take French flour and, and eat it, okay? You need some processing. Um, but it was used in the 1940s and 50s, like 70, 80 years ago. It was used to uh, prevent flu and malaria, okay? We don't know, we cannot find good studies for that, but somebody tried it and people believe it in, and there are some studies that suggest that it worked. But as we're, as they were using that, so that that's already again in, immune, uh, you know, against infection, right? And then as they, uh, then it came apparent that people who had diabetes and, and were on metformin, their glucose went down. So it became an anti-diabetic drug. Okay. By the way, most of the metformin in this world is produced in India. <laughs> okay. Most of it. Uh, and it's very cheap. It's very right. cheap everywhere. Right. Uh, but many people are using it because most of the diabetics are using it. But people started seeing something really weird. They were doing clinical studies and they were showing that metformin prevents diabetes. They showed that metformin is protecting from cardiovascular disease. They show that met- people on metformin have less cancers. People on metformin have less dementia and they deteriorate less into dementia. And that people with metformin live longer than people who don't have diabetes. All the people on metformin have diabetes today, but they, if they take metformin, they live longer, they have less mortality than people who who don't have diabetes, okay? 17% less mortality. And so many of those studies has been done, so it's not that we're guessing. People are saying, oh, 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 it happened that metformin maybe has four corners and one of them is cardiovascular, one is this, one is this, one, no. It hits the biology of aging. Now, how, how do we know, you know, what is the biology of aging? We, we geroscientists agree that there are about eight hallmarks of aging. How do you get to be a hallmark of aging? You get to be a hallmark of aging if you say, you know, that's what's going wrong and I stopped it and, you know, my animals lived healthier and longer. Okay, that's how you become a hallmark. It's not, it's not the causes of aging, okay? Right. But it's something that you can treat. Uh, also, those hallmarks of aging are connected to each other. So uh, if even if you treat one of them, you get improvement in the others. Okay, so it's kind of a powerful tool to work on these hallmarks of aging. 
And, and metformin hits all the hallmarks of aging, you know, whether primarily or just because it fixes the other, uh, I don't know, but that's what it's doing. Lovely. So, uh, so, so that, that's why we took metformin as a tool and we went to the FDA and said, we want to repurpose it for aging. The ones who are excited about human longevity, would you suggest them to take metformin? How safe is it? I'm 48, my mom's 76, we both don't have diabetes. So can we have metformin? If, if yes, what would be the dosage that you would suggest? Look, I don't have uh, any reason to suggest to people to take metformin because I want to do this study, right? If everybody takes metformin, I cannot really do this study, okay? Um, and and so, um, but, but and, it's, and you need a doctor to prescribe that, right? Uh, but I'll tell you, I, um, I had, especially with the COVID, uh, you know, people... People um, who were on metformin during the COVID had less hospitalization and significantly less mortality, between 50 and 70% less mortality, okay? So my in-laws, for example, my in-laws, I said, you know, it's a war, you know, there's no, you know, indication, but I want you to take, you know, I want to take you metformin, Okay. It's an ethical dilemma for me. What do I say? Okay. Uh, and, and that's my story and I stick to it. Right. So, so how has the media and peers uh, reacted for, to, for on you going or, or repurposing a drug? I mean, you know, going for uh, uh, metformin as maybe like a, a primary cure for aging. How has the peers and uh, regulatory body reacted? So... Uh, you know, one of the nicest thing, when we went to the FDA, we went with Ron Howard, who's one of the very famous uh, movie makers in the United States. And he went with us to the FDA and he did a movie that's called The Age of Aging for National Geographic, where he really monitored our, our, our success. But this is from a marketing point of view, this is the problem. When I started my research, I said, I'm, I'm into aging. And most people, I'm in New York, you know, and most people like, ah, we don't want to hear about that. That's, that's a bad word. We'll see you later. Um, also, when people are so busy, you know, young people are busy, they, they just don't think ahead much, okay? So I thought to myself, you know, why am I saying aging? After all, I have centenarians. I'm looking at longevity. Okay, so let's talk about longevity. Now, now, what happened then? People assumed that, oh, longevity, you get disease and now you live longer? Thank you very much. I don't need that. Okay, so really what I'm using more often is health span. And it's really about the health span. Okay, it's living healthy, 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 and then dying, just like my centenarians. Okay, uh, I... Uh, yeah, the longevity for me is a side effect, <laughs> okay? Maybe not a good side effect. Maybe maybe you cannot afford to live longer, right? I mean, I, I don't know what, what to do with this side effect, but we're really talking about being healthy because this is what's going wrong now, okay? The accumulation of disease after disease, the fact that the biology of aging that can be harnessed is free. Right. So, so what do you think it would take for FDA to approve, uh, you know, the, the, whatever you're doing? And if the metformin does get approved, what would be your market strategy, you know, go to market strategy? So, uh, so what, what we're doing is we're doing a study that's called right. TAME. Right. We are going to recruit 3,000 people. Uh, and half of them will be on placebo, okay, on a fake drug, and one will be on metformin, and we'll watch for five years how much diseases they're accumulating. And our hypothesis is those that are on metformin, their time until they get disease will be shifted by several years, okay? And that's what we'll bring to the FDA, okay? And the FDA will approve uh, metformin is something that changes the cluster of age-related diseases. 
that is like aging. That could be a template for other people to do experiments like that. You you also are the founder of Cobar Inc. and you are also uh, looking at another approach of, of for aging over there. So could you talk about that also? Yes, my uh, my my friend uh, Hasi Cohen and I founded this company based on a. a on a finding, a, a really important biological finding, that the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of our, our cells, um, also produced peptides that we didn't know that they produce. And those peptides are getting out of the mitochondria and going to different organs and talking with them and making them more resilient to diseases. And so we are developing those MDPs as a treatment for aging and age-related disease. One of those MDPs, for example, that we're developing, um, there's a paper that was published today in Cell Metabolism in a really good journal that shows that it also extends the life of mice, you know, extends the lifespan of mice. So it's, uh, it's a really uh, strong peptide that is in the midst of aging. Today, some of the top leading scientists, biotech, biotech firms are working on human longevity, you know, right from senolytic treatments, they're addressing thymus uh, shrinkage, then the stem cells, gene therapy, telomere lengthening, blood plasma transfusion, epigenetic reprogramming, and even uh, at the, there's this company in Israel who's looking at hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So which approach of your peers seems to be the most promising and why? You're asking, like who's your favorite kid, right? Ah. Who's your favorite, favorite child? I'm, I'm not going to tell you who's my yeah. favorite child because they are hallmarks of aging, right? Yeah. So yeah. everyone, you just counted those hallmarks of aging pretty much, okay? Each one is a target. That's the cool thing with the hallmark of aging that, that biotechs came and said, you know, I'll look at this, I'll look at this, and they'll all make progress. Um, and, and, and look, the combination progress is important because, first of all, there will be combination of drug and will be personalized medicine. But I'll give you an example. The senolytics, those drugs that will kill your senescent cell, right? The senescent cell that are accumulating, they're not dying and they're doing damage, okay? Or they're called sometimes zombie cells, not for any good reason, but, okay, you don't have that much of them, okay? So... So, you know, I wouldn't say that you'll get it. On the other hand, your mother probably does have a lot of senescent cells. So that's the time to give it. So every drug will have a purpose and a time and more indication. There's another point here. Um, so let, let me say it like that. Um, a 70-year-old man can the sperm of a 70-year-old man can fertilize an egg of a 50-year-old woman, okay? We can, we can measure the age, actually, of the sperm, okay? So the, the, the baby is developed, right? And the cells are starting to divide. When that happens, the cells start at zero. Again, they don't remember the age of the 70 and 50 years old. They erase all that, they start from zero, okay? We have figured out inside us how to do it in this example, okay? So now the question is, how do we do it to erase aging as we go on, okay? And this is kind of the gold, uh, the gold standard that we want to do, and we're making even progress of that. But, but I'll tell you that there are lots of technologies that will enable us to do a lot, not necessarily at, you know, not actually in my lifetime. <laughs> I hope it's long, but maybe not. But my, my view is that to make it simple, okay, a maximal lifespan of humans is about 115 years. We argue about it because there are people who lived more than 115 years, but pretty much it's 115 years. And we die in, in, the, uh, in the developed world, we die a little shy of 80 years old, right? In India, I think life expectancy is like 65. I mean, I, I'm not sure it's clear even, okay? So let, let's say for me here in New York, if people are dying at 80, 
and we can live to 150, and there are 35 years that we can realize as a species without being so dramatic about it, okay? Uh, so one, one thing that we have to do now is realize those 35 years, okay? And we can do it by metformin and combination and other things. But then, and in parallel, the question is, does this have to be the end or can we do even better after that? And, you know, and I, I, I don't know, but, uh, you know, you have to think about it because it could make even the next 35 years much more reasonable. So, you know, in 2013, Google's offshoot company Calico was on the Times magazine cover and the headline read that can Google solve that? So what are your views on that headlines? You know, as, as a visionary scientist, researchers getting the support, do you think they get the support it deserves or do they get ridiculed? What could or should be done to support, fund, inspire and maybe also have a regulatory body that nurtures these uh, future visionary thinkers who are, you know, trying to solve the greatest uh, problem. Because I believe that, you know, if we solve the aging issue, it, it, it's one of the biggest problem that mankind is facing. So what, what is immortality exactly? And how many things that are heartbreaking do you need to see in your lifetime too, right? I mean, uh, but anyhow, that's, that's not my view. My view is that... Uh, that uh, you know, increasing health span is a very, very good cause, and that in order to achieve it, you uh, need the science, uh, but you need also you need the people, you need the media, you need the politicians, and you need the funding to do that. So, for example, you know, uh, 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 spoiler alert. Uh, in March, we're hoping there is a foundation out of the Middle East that is going to put a billion dollar a year to solve the aging problem, okay? A, a, a foundation like that has also political power. It has, a, you know, the money can go and take care of a lot of things and really catch a wave on that and accelerate everything in a significant way. So um, so I'm looking, uh, you know, so I think the time, I think that's where we are. We're catching a wave and I think it'll be accelerated and there'll be ups and downs, but we would live healthier and eventually longer, however much you want. So DeepMind, you know, which is Google's, again, I'm mean, talking about Google's uh, company uh, offshoot, you know, they, they, they've created AlphaFold, you know, and they say, they claim to have solved the protein folding issue. So are you leveraging artificial intelligence to assist in the human uh, uh, longevity? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Look, um, one of the points for scientists, we were, even though we thought we were working on many things, we, we usually picked a, like, we, you know, I worked on insulin, okay? Uh, and insulin has actions and insulin is secreted. So there are 100 things that I would be interested in, okay? But look, um, each one of our genome has 6 billion letters, okay? We can sequence all of them. So to understand what's going on, we have to do what's called omics. We have to take 6 billion le uh, letters of you and millions of other people and make a sense of what's going on, what, what can we learn. It's, it's a huge thing, okay? You need a lot of computational power, but more than that, you need, a, you need to do things, you need to ask the right question and have artificial intelligence help you to figure out what's important. Now, it's not only the DNA, you have also proteins, you have tens of thousands of proteins. Okay, so tell, take tens of thousands of proteins in, in million people again. Uh, you know, what do you do with that? And then what's the connection to the genome? And then you have metabolome and transcriptome and everything is really, really big. And in a certain way, what we've done is uh, we always have, we always were looking for the needle in the haystack. But now we're making the haystack much, much bigger. 
Okay. And so we need artificial intelligence in order to make it smaller again. Okay. So how do we take this omics and artificial intelligence and solve really uh, problems with lots of, of data point that would lead us to some uh, uh, special discoveries uh, with aging. Okay, okay. This, is, this is what we're going, well, this is what we're doing. All of us are doing that. And that's what we're going to do. Lovely, lovely. You know, so today I've been in the genetic editing, you know, CRISPR-Cas9, which it's been getting a lot of, uh, you know, attention. You know, there are people who are looking at 3D printing, human organs. We have, then we have uh, animals such as the bowhead whale, mole rats. Then there is uh, the turiptosis, donhi, the je jellyfish, which Im immortal. So do you think that the understanding of these animals and, and you know, are, a deeper understanding of uh, or genetic would uh, make up of these animals to us would help in human longevity. Yeah, I I think the comparative biology is really very interesting. You know, why why animals that are pretty much the same, you know, from the same species, very close species, have ten times difference in life expectancy. You know, it's really interesting. Some of the examples are going to be very specific to this model, and some of them might be insightful uh, for us too. Any last words? When do you think we will uh, have something which will be available for the masses? And what's the timelines that you predict for having something you know which which can really you know solve this aging problem? Uh, you know, whenever people ask me this question, I used to say within 10 years, and I think I was never right. Uh, but I'll say it now, but I have to tell you, I really believe that I'm right. First of all, metformin, you know, I, I gave my little spiel about metformin, but there are lots of people who are taking metformin now, okay? Uh, so metformin is going to happen. It's going to give us two, three more years of health span on average, okay? But then they're going to have other, either nutraceutical or drugs that will work in combination and will gain more and more health span uh, as time goes by. Okay. I'm very optimistic, you know, that's, that's it. The aging, the way we know it is gone. We're not going to have one disease and its treatment and a second disease of a treatment and you have four disease and their treatment and they're interacting with each other. That's not life. And it shouldn't be like that because we know we can do better. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a great note to end on because I think that's not life. Whether we live for 60, 80, 100, 150, 200. I mean, if we can live healthily, even for a shorter span where we can spend time with our loved ones and enjoy life, I think that would be so awesome. So it's not really about living for 100, 200 years because you, earlier you mentioned that, you know, life comes with its own ups and downs, you know, and living happily, living satisfied and content and healthily, I think it should be the most important criteria for living. So if, I, I really hope that, you know, we come to a point where we don't have to see your aged and our loved ones, you know, suffer and die. I, if we can take the suffering out of the equation, if we can take the diseases out of the equation, uh, that would be an exciting world. And today, I think technology, I think as a tool, has given us the opportunity to kind of find solutions and what I mentioned earlier also, you know, if we break away from our, uh, you know, silos, you know, the way we fun function and, and if we join hand with the global community, there is so much we can do. You know, you're doing an exciting job. Wish you the very best for whatever you're doing. And I hope and I really wish and I pray that you create something which, you know, makes this whole world live better, age healthier. On that note, thank you. It was a, a pleasure and honor talking to you and to my listeners, if you like uh, and hear, hear what you see, please press the subscribe button. Until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, really thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good, mor good, good morning in India. <laughs> good idea. Take care. See ya. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.